Due to adult content, parental discretion is advised. To begin. To begin. Are you watching closely? How to start? I just, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? In life itself, a memoir, Roger Eaton begins. I was born inside the movie of my life. I was born a poor black child. The visuals were before me. I was born in it, molded by it. The audio surrounded me. The plot unfolded inevitably, but not necessarily. I don't remember how I got into the movie, but it continues to entertain me. At first, the frames flicker without connection. We all are born with a certain package. We are who we are. Where we were born, who we were born as, how we were raised. We're kind of stuck inside that person. And the purpose of civilization and growth is to be able to reach out and empathize a little bit with other people. And for me, the movies are like a machine that generates empathy. It lets you understand a little bit more about different hopes, aspirations, dreams, and fears. It helps us to identify with the people who are sharing this journey with us. Here's the deal. You just give me the facts. Just the facts. Only the facts. Breathe. Focus. Keep it simple. No, no, no. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Welcome. Cock and Bull Minute, a Tristram Shandy story, a podcast in which, eventually, ostensibly, at some point, we will be talking about the 2005 film Tristram Shandy, a Cock and Bull story, one minute at a time. Good Lord, what is this story all about? Cock and Bull story. Here's your host, me, Robert Black. This week's film within a film, Coed Frenzy. Featured in 1981's Brian De Palma-directed Blowout. A bit of a slasher film with a nice peeping Tom flavor. This sequence, and you really should watch it, it's on YouTube, includes scantily clad women dancing to disco when they should be studying, sex, masturbation, and a shower scene. All the cliches. It is, as it were, a little over the top.
experience terrible. <laughs> what cat did you strangle to get that? The cat that you hired. That's her voice. You mean you didn't dub that? No. That's hers? Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. You want to run that back? You kind of want to hear the scream. <laughs> All the effects except for the screen. Oh! Kill it. You're right. It's hers. And it's shit. Look, Jack, I didn't hire that girl for her scream. I hired that girl for her tits. Well, then what are you worried about with those tits? Who's going to be watching her scream? Let's move on. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, Jack. Look. You may recognize one of those voices. That is John Travolta, of course, playing the sound recordist who, in the larger film's plot, accidentally records evidence of a murder, and hilarity ensues. But we're on minute 48 of Tristram Shandy. Production assistant Jenny, that's Jenny with an I-E, as opposed to Jenny with a Y, Steve's girlfriend, continues her story about fighting in Robert Persson's 1974 Lancelot Talak. Rob sits on the arm of a chair. Steve and Inglesby stand nearby. Others sit nearby, some paying no attention to the story. But maybe no one is paying much attention to the story. And that's the point. Jenny. And, and they, they just keep, keep clobbering each other. Each other. And, and it, you know, know, it goes, goes on forever, forever, you know? Just, just hitting, hitting and hitting. hitting and and she pauses, reverse, looking at Jenny over Steve's shoulder, past Inglesby. And she looks at Steve as she says this next line. And I'll remind you of William Rivers' take on Jenny. Well, his take on the other scholar's take on Jenny in the book, Tristram Shandy as merely a symbol for any woman beloved by any man. And I don't mean to get political, but maybe it's doing pump up the minute three times a week and the election being just a week away. But this Jenny, here, in this moment, is telling a useful anecdote, but so many in the room are paying her no attention. Steve will flirt with her, of course, but he's not paying attention here. And isn't that how it always is? He'll probably reference something that's a lot to lack himself later and forget to credit Jenny for the idea, because that's how the patriarchy do. The woman's talking. You nod, pretend you're listening, but really, it's like that conversation in Blowout, more about her body and what she might let you do with it than about what she might have to say. Jenny is talking about subtext, and she has actually read the novel Tristram Shandy, unlike all these men in the room, and they just don't get it. Just wait around for her to stop talking. Me? I want to hear Jenny talk some more about this combat and the subtext of not being able to connect. Regarding the novels, Jenny, William E. Rivers. Interpretations. Fall, 1981. Quote, If we follow a simpler, more natural line of reasoning than these critics have selected, and assume first that Tristram Shandy is a work of art, and that we therefore should place primary emphasis on what Jenny means to Tristram, and second, that Jenny is not just a creation of Tristram's mind, but that she is in the novel a real woman who Tristram knows, we come to some very interesting conclusions about Jenny, Tristram, the importance of their relationship, and the reasons Tristram is writing in the first place writing in the first place. Jenny is the one person from Tristram's present time whom he admires as much as those people he so lovingly presents in his past time narrative. However, Tristram can never fully express, consummate, his love for Jenny because of his physical limitations. The pain generated by this unfulfilled emotional and physical desire is one major reason he writes his life and opinions. Tristram dives into the past to avoid the pain of the present and more importantly, to understand and reconcile himself to his past so that he can better deal with the pain of present reality. Jenny is a concrete, bittersweet, present reality. Tristram tries to suppress thoughts of her, but never can completely keep her and their relationship out of his mind and narrative. End quote. We will get into what this Jenny might mean to the fictional Steve in later episodes. Jenny continues. It's actually like, like a, a metaphor, metaphor for, for life, life you know? Yeah. It's, it's about, about the impossibility of actually, actually connecting, connecting with, with another, another human, human being. being. Back to the previous angle. Only Inglesby seems to really be paying attention. Because we're, we're all wearing, wearing these carapaces, this, 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 casing, this casing, this rubbish, rubbish really. really. And, and, the, the, and, the and the more they, they hit and hit. And hit. Oh. 
actually, the less the impact. It's, it's just really, really moving, actually. Rob, mm-hmm. Steve, wow. Rob, mm-hmm. Like she has just realized none of them care, she waves her hand and starts to walk away. Jenny, I'll see you later. Robin Inglesby watch her go more than Steve does. Steve, okay, see you later. Rob, see you later. Beat. Steve turns to see that she is gone. Turns back. Steve, what was all that about? Cut to Simon on the other side of the room by the fireplace. Simon, yeah, she's a bit of a film nut. You should hear her when she's on about Fastbinder. Steve, Fastbinder. Fastbinder. Steve has no idea who that is. This will come up again, of course, in minute 75. Inglesby swings his shoulder bag around to his front. Inglesby, I've got a list of the men that fell. Steve seems to be paying attention now. A man is talking. Inglesby raises a finger and turns to Rob and Steve. Ninety-two died that morning. Of course, the entire siege lasted through July and August and into September, and something like 20,000 fell. But we will get into more detail about Namer later. Inglesby points at Rob. So, so your, your chap, chap was lucky to be alive. alive. New angle on Inglesby from behind Steve. And Steve backs up to the left like he knows he's in the shot and doesn't want to be. And there's Ed, barely in the frame, sitting off to Inglesby's left. I, I could fix up your lot. lot. And the minute cuts off before we can hear Inglesby's silly notion about fighters yelling each other's names on the battlefield for the sake of realism. Until next time. Cut. Thank you for listening. This has been Cock and Bull Minute, a Tristram Shandy story. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Cock Bull Minute. Find more content at lemmingdrops.com. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a Mandalorian. Why would you create such an abomination? This is the weapon of a coward. The, uh, it's a past stuff that dreams are made of. Cut. That's a wrap. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You're still here? You just don't turn it off! It's over. Go home. Go.